Aloha and welcome to Island Sunday. On the morning of July 11th, Big Island residents and visitors from around the world experienced the magic and majesty of a total solar eclipse. The event was a celebration of the natural sciences in true Hawaiian fashion, sharing in the wonder of this rare occurrence. We'll be talking today with John Thorpe, a stunt coordinator who had a truly unique view of the eclipse. Thanks for joining us today, John. Tell me a little bit about um, where you were that day and how you decided to go about and do it. I had friends flying in from all over the country to try and go to the Big Island and other various places to get the totality. And I thought, I'm not going to chase it. Uh, being a 19-year hang glider here, I thought, I'm going to go up and join with it. So that's precisely what I did. And on that very early morning, getting up before sunrise and feeling all those chicken skin, as we call it here in Hawaii, up, uh, I uh, decided to, uh, to fly off into the eclipse and to be a part of what this universe was kind of give us as this unique experience for everyone. So I wanted to be a part of it. On Oahu, the weather wasn't very good where you were. The weather was terrible. And um, the wind was doing all kinds of strange things. Normally we have a northeasterly trade wind flow here, and it was blowing parallel to the ridge. So it wasn't ideal conditions. The clouds were covering the ridge. Uh, we were in and out of a total cloud bank or fog bank. Is, uh, you can you know, think of it driving in the fog. And so we never even thought that we would even get any of this footage whatsoever. But I just felt there was something inside of me that at least go and try, you know, do the best you can to see what we can get. And so I did get off. You're the only one of your group that actually went up. Yeah, there was a couple of others up on top that were going to try, but the conditions just weren't, you know, there, some things told them not to do it. Some other things told me to go ahead and do it. I felt that I could, and so I went ahead. At about 6.30, I took off, and I launched. And I was in the air for approximately a little over two hours. Now, you brought along a little bit of video of exactly what you saw, I guess, the hang glider's perspective. Maybe we could roll that now and see uh, what John Thorpe saw on the morning of the eclipse. There is a in and out of the clouds and at times completely grayed out where you couldn't see anything whatsoever and I was radio contact with my camera crew going can you see what I'm seeing they're going we're totally grayed out and then at times they'd say we can't see you and I said I can't see you either I'm completely grayed out I can't see anything either and uh, so it was just magic that's the only way I can describe it as magic. When you get into those cloud banks like that, were ever any times when you're kind of going, oh boy, maybe I shouldn't have come up here? Yeah, it, after, after getting off, of which the takeoff was not an easy thing to do. Uh, the wind was in a wrong direction and it was very turbulent at takeoff. Once I got into the air, I thought, I'm home free. I just, we, we're gonna get this. And then, uh, waiting for my camera crew to get to the bottom of the cliff, after it was all filmed and done, a cloud bank came in, the final cloud bank, and I completely grayed out and could see nothing for almost 15 minutes. And when I came out of the clouds, the horror struck me. I was on the back side of the ridge. Somehow I had gotten over the back side, and very few have talked about blowing over the back side and being in the rotor or the downdraft. And then the first view that I had was high tension wires, and oh my God, I just made the mistake of my life after what I thought the easy part was over. Now it was a fight, and the turbulence and the rotor of the downdraft on the back side, I just thought I would fight the whole way to the ground and not let it consume me, and I wasn't going to give up. So I fought the whole way to the ground, and sure enough, I had a safe landing at Mariner's Cove, and not a scratch to me or my hang glider. And uh, I just thank God, because he was right there with me as well as couple of others that are my kindred spirits that kind of watch out for me so it was neat what do people say when you when you show them that video and you, and you go that hang glider right there that's me <laughs> um, well I think it's really unique I think what we got is very very special I think the universe went to a whole trial and tribulation of putting this on a show for mankind and some of the statements that were made oh my god there is a god you know and just 
how it touched so many people, I, I just don't think you can do any better than that. You know? and people talk about near-death experiences where they see this light at the end of the tunnel. Well, we actually filmed that where there's a cloud, a tunnel of clouds and this brilliant white light at the end. And all I could think was, go for the light, go for the light. And, and that's what I think kept me safe. And I think that's what we all have to look forward to, is there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So you actually had one of the better views of the eclipse. I mean, it was clouded over so much of the state. I had the greatest view. I just didn't really anticipate the, the after effect of where I ended up because I, I wanted to make a beautiful landing on the beach in Waimanalo. And instead, I landed by myself in a bunch of high bushes at the, in Mariner's Cove. Mm -hmm. So my, it was a, a very unexpected landing, but it was a good one. And any landing you walk away from was a good one. And I walked away from that one without a scratch. So in the stunt business, that's what you're supposed to do, is you walk away without a scratch. So we did it. Terrific. Well, thank you for joining us today and for sharing that story with us. Thanks for having me. And that me. video. A very impressive. Thanks. <laughs> An awesome sight. Who can say what